So concrete pouring. Jerry just pulled out an internal consolidator, vibrator. Uh, we usually recommend a, no larger than a one inch head. A one inch head vibrator will get you about a one foot radius of consolidating in concrete. Now certain different vibrators have different frequencies so the head size itself doesn't always determine exactly what the radius is of, of uh, consolidating. However, that's just a good rule of thumb. One inch gets you one foot. So knowing that, you're sticking that vibrator down just about in every cell of the wall. Uh, and what we do when we vibrate, Jerry will demonstrate, but when we're vibrating, we're just going straight down with the vibrator and then straight back out. We don't stop moving. You know, of course, sometimes you do a little bit, but for the most part, it's straight down and straight up and keep it moving at all times. It's not usually a good idea to try to move concrete with a vibrator. Uh, of course, it happens, but we try to limit that as much as possible. And uh, there, but there are some scenarios where underneath windows and doors, you're trying, if the concrete comes too stiff, you're trying to pull concrete underneath an opening. You know, yeah, it happens, but. Uh, running vibrator, ACI 318 is one second per inch. So you vibrate four feet of concrete, just take four seconds, come up on concrete. One, se one second per foot. Did I say per inch? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the size of the vibrator, you talked about that? Yes. Of course, it varies. If you've got a great big vibrator, You'll have too much frequency, too much pressure. But if you go with a one inch or three quarter inch, uh, there will be no problem. Vibrate as long as you want. Every vibrator is designed for a certain width area of influence. So we'll recommend a one inch. Yep, so again, we talked about you know, banging on, if you don't have a vibrator, can you take a wood block and pound on the wall? Certainly can, and it is a good idea if you don't have a vibrator handy. But uh, anybody close to us, we let use our vibrator as well, so that, that's, uh, that's an option. Or pouring taller walls, real tall walls, and we stack our panels. So again, you've seen it now several times, but we can just slide up the panel. We can stick a pump hose right through the side of the wall to pour the concrete. And then it's nice because you're just vibrating small lifts. You're not trying to get, you know, a, a real long wick vibrator from the top of a wall where you don't have any idea where it's going. It could be going four feet in the wrong direction. That hose that Jerry's holding right there is a fle <laughs> flexible concrete hose. Uh, it's called a mud snake, most commonly by pump truck drivers and, and users. Uh, it's the perfect hose for pouring concrete into ICS because I can shut off that hose by bending it. You have full swaying capabilities of moving the concrete where you want it, not just a solid hose coming off that pump truck and you're at the mercy only of that pump truck driver. If, if at all possible, anybody that's going to be pouring a lot of concrete into ICF walls, you probably would just buy your own hose, so you always have it no matter where you go. Uh, otherwise, ask your pump truck driver he, if he has one. Most of them are starting to get them on their trucks now because they actually work real well for pouring all concrete. Because you can, you can actually squeeze it with your hands as you're pouring too to slow down pressure if you need to. You know, if you're up above an opening and uh, you're not looking to blast it in there or blast in a short offset like that two-foot offset over there, you can just simply squeeze squeeze or shut a little bit with your hands and it really slows the pressure down. If you get a concrete pump truck that's uh, older and the pump's getting wore out and it just keeps, keeps blasting instead of a nice steady flow, that hose works real well because you can put a slight little bend in that hose and, and it slows down that blast or that um, uh, constant or inconsistent pressure from the pump. Uh, what can we pour? 
how can we pour concrete into the wall? However, you can get it in, in there. Uh, we we bucketed it, <laughs> bucketed it in. We pumped, conveyed right out of a concrete truck, uh, out of a, a, a crane bucket on commercial sites. I mean, you name it, we've done it to get concrete inside the walls. Three minutes, minutes to lunch, so certainly if there's any questions on pouring uh, slumps, we usually promote about a, we tell people, tell the, the drivers, if, if you're not a real experienced concrete person, tell your concrete company that you'd like the concrete brought out at about a five slump, and it's gonna come out at about a six to a seven, most likely, uh, almost always. It, concrete trucks, Concrete truck drivers usually add water when they're going to the site. And the concrete almost always ends up showing up wetter than you wanted it. So keep that in mind. Request a little bit stiffer. Can always add a little bit when it gets there. Uh, if you're pouring with different additives and things, then that means you know concrete real well and I don't really need to tell you how to pour it other than some tips and tricks about how to just be a little bit more careful with, with ICF versus a regular traditional form, of course.